Phelps. Batting sixth, the left fielder Paul Tates. Batting seventh, the center fielder Clayton Chadwick. Batting eighth, the catcher Fernando Gonzalez. And batting ninth, the shortstop Colby Branch. Pops up on the first pitch. And it's Tippett in short left field. And makes the play, one pitch, one out. Jones and Casas, neither guy saw that ball at all. First pitch of the game, and Tippett gets welcomed back with a, a tough sun ball that nobody else could see, and he made a great play on it. That's uh, that's the start South Carolina needed right there, one pitch, one out. Tippett came back in yesterday's game. Homered, now he's getting his first start in a few weeks. Charlie Condon, speaking of homers. Look at those numbers, 458, 34 bombs, 72 runs batted in. And another great series. I mean, they're coming right at him. It's a, it's a dangerous game you're playing, but he's 0-2. Let's see if he can put him away right here. We, I mean, we got to talk about this guy maybe having the best season ever. That's foul back. He enters this afternoon on a 20-game hitting streak. Leading the SEC and the nation in batting average, homers, slugging percentage. In the hole, 0-2. You can see the concerted effort right there. They're trying to get in on his long arms. He's just got such quick hands. And 0-2 especially, you want to get in even further than that. 59 career long balls. Charlie Condon. See Reeves getting way in there. He got away with one right there, Dave. That was a lot of plate and down for a guy with a lot of leverage. He homered in eight straight games. That streak ended yesterday. Continues to battle low and two. That one just misses. One and two the count on Condon. Think about those home run totals, Grayson. He's only a sophomore, Richard sophomore. Oh yeah, I mean, it's two years. <laughs> it's it's truly incredible. I mean, he uh, he kept Ethan Petrie from winning SEC Freshman of the Year and National Freshman of the Year because he hit 386 with 25 and 67 as a fr as a freshman last year. So he uh, he's the favorite to go 1-1 in the draft here in a couple months. That's ripped to left, and it'll bounce into the corner. One out double for Charlie Condon. The Bulldogs are in business here in the top of the first. Yeah, I mean, you're just you're kind of playing with fire when you pitch to him. If you, if you put him on, he's just going to be standing at first. He's not going to really beat you too bad doing that. Um, He's only got three stolen bases on the year. Now he's in scoring position with a, another good hitter, but he's just a special, special talent. And we'll see. We'll see how many more chances he gets at the plate in this series finale. Fisher review brought to you by Cook here, heat and air and plumbing. We're gonna have a review here. here. After review, the call on the field will stand. South Carolina loses a challenge, has one remaining. Early challenge does not go the Gamecocks way. Condon will be on second with one down, and Dylan Goldstein will step into the box for the Bulldogs. Transfer from FAU. And takes a strike from Ganey. Slider at the top of the zone there. Let's see if Ganey stays heavy sliders with this left-on-left -left matchup. Another one. Ganey is getting ahead. He got ahead of Condon 0-2. He's ahead of Goldstein 0-2. Here are the numbers on the season for Goldstein. He's two for seven in this series. He scored four runs. Got him. First strikeout for Ganey. Two down. Big pitch there after going with slider, slider. Good idea there right there by Ganey to try and get a chase on the fastball up. Even if he takes that pitch, you're set up to go back to the slider. But big at bat right here. South Carolina needs to put a zero on the board and not allow Alford to drive this run in. Opponents are only hitting 230 this season against 
Ganey. Here's Slate Alford. He attacks the first pitch and pops it up. Foul territory, Patry will run out of room. A couple of rows behind the Gamecocks dugout. I think Ganey might know he's going a little deeper into this game. We've had him a couple times and he's really max effort. He's, he's still max effort right here, but it looks to be toned down just a little bit. Coach Kingston and, and Coach Williams might have had a talk with him before the game, say, hey, we need, we need three, four, five innings out of you here. It's his 20th appearance of the season, but his first start pitched twice last weekend at Mizzou. Combined six innings scoreless, no walks and 10 strikeouts. Velo's still good, that was 93 right there. It just doesn't look as you know, violent as it does when he comes in in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. Alfred Jr. from Madison, Alabama, transferred from Mississippi State. He's got power to all fields. He and Charlie Condon, the only Bulldogs to start every game this season. And he enters with a six game hitting streak, a 27 game reach base streak. Charging from third is Casas. Inside. So if you can salvage the series here, it's, it helps your case. Here's Austin Brindling. He takes ball one, 93 from Harris. Junior from Bradenton, Florida. He's a transfer from the University of North Florida. And there's a strike. Brindling three for eight in this series, a couple of runs scored. Has walked three times as well. He's really established himself at the top of this order. He, you know, that Arkansas series, he hadn't really looked back since then and uh, provided a really nice spark for this team. And they put him at the bottom of the order, if I remember correctly. Grayson was batting eighth in that first start and then the leadoff spot. He's been there yeah. ever since. He generally gives them, you know, good at bats as you don't really see too often. He rolls over the first pitch, and it's normally four, five, six pitches his first at bat of the game. And you look at the numbers, he's got an OPS over 1,000. He's doing a good job. 14 straight starts now for Brindling. Count evens at two and two. He had his first home run of the season in the midweek at Winthrop. That was part of a four-hit game. Just continues to produce. He's on base four times. Game one of the series. He's worked the count full. Brindling with a 545 on base percentage in this series. to the right side, it gets past Alford. Brindling will reach, that should be the first error of the game. Yeah, that might be a break, South Carolina needed to get off to a good start here. Another good long at bat from Brindling, doesn't hit this ball hard at all and probably a play that should be made, but you've lost the first two and you're trying to salvage a series. You take any break you can get, this is a good, good start for them. Brindling, of course, is a threat to run. He's three for five this season in stolen bases, has one in this series. Here's Ethan Petrie. He takes a strike. Sophomore from Land Lakes, Florida. 303, 19 homers, 48 runs batted in. He has three hits in this series. It is an E4. Error charge to Alford. And a check on Brindling. If Harris stays that quick to the play, he's going to be tough to run on. That was more of a slide step right there, and it's 
Still 94. He's got a really good arm. Gamecocks don't run a ton, but they run a lot more than Georgia. 58 steals and 70 tries for South Carolina. Georgia efficient, 21 of 23. It doesn't look like Harris is going to give too many opportunities. Uh, we haven't seen enough pitches out of the stretch to see if that's his normal. If that's his normal look, then you're you're just not going to be able to run much. He's probably less than a one-two or one-one to the plate. One and two, the count on Petrie. Brindling leads off first. Outside, two and two. And Petrie's the team leader in homers and walks. Slugging percentage as well. of that. Petra with 48 walks this season. He's second in the SEC, tied for ninth in the nation. Fans here today or this whole series are getting a treat. Two of the best hitters in America, Charlie Condon and Ethan Petrie. It's uh, two guys that are going to be going up the minor league ladder together. And I have a feeling we'll see him in the major leagues at some point. Two really special hitters. One and two for freshman of the year last season. Going back and forth, Petri and Condon. There's a look at Mark Kingston. Seventh season as a head coach for South Carolina. Super regional appearance last season, also in his first season. Gonna go even further this season, Grayson. They'd love to get to Omaha. Absolutely, that, that gets a lot harder if you have to go on the road that first regional weekend and super regionals. And barring a miracle, it looks like at the minimum they're gonna have to go on the road for a super regional if they're able to get out of that first weekend. But winning on the road and the postseason in college baseball is a very, very difficult thing to do. So their uh, starts here today, they need a win today and they need to have a really good showing at Knoxville, which is another tall task. an opportunity to raise that RPI, and then there's always Hoover. Right, yeah. You could get a, get a couple in Hoover, and you never know what can happen. But uh, I think with two weeks to go, it would it would not look great on the resume to get swept at home and try and have your chances of hosting here in Founders Park. So they were really need to have a good showing here today. One know the count on Jackson. Fly ball center field. Chadwick is back. Two down. Tire the Charlotte transfer Blake Jackson. Yeah, he hit that ball right on the screws. Just hit it at the wrong, wrong part of the field. Now Messina's getting a rare DH day on the weekend. Caught a lot of pitches on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, it's you know, Reeves is a really good catcher behind the plate, and it gives uh gives Coach Kingston a, a chance to still keep two really good bats in the lineup. And if the concern, Grayson, is losing Messina's arm, this is a Georgia team that doesn't run much, as right. I mentioned before. Right. It's, you know, it's just a way to give give Messina a little bit of a break and keep those two bats in there. But And Reeves, I mean, heck, he hit two home runs, and he, he's, a, he's a spark for this offense as well. Reeves has nine homers and only 19 starts this season. And we're talking about Cole Messina, who's at the plate right now, is the SEC Player of the Week. Seven for 11 series at Mizzou. Last weekend with three walks, he homered twice, doubled twice, tripled as well. Drove in seven in that series. Not many teams across the country have such an offensive threat at catcher, let alone two. Yeah, it's a, it's a luxury to have, and Messina, obviously, the heart and soul of this team behind the plate, a really good defender. But Reeves has gotten his opportunity middle of the season, and he hasn't, hasn't really looked back. I think if you had told Reeves in March that you'd be a starting catcher 
and hitting five hole this late in the season, he would have uh, he would have signed up for that. And his final year of college baseball, honored before the game with a number of Gamecocks honored. Yeah, four in the starting lineup here today. Good hitters count for Messina, three and one. That was the one right there. Messina just missed it. 3-1 fastball, got it up in the zone, and took a healthy hack at it. Opponents hitting 253 this season against Zach Harris. Seventeenth appearance and fourth start of the year for Harris. Brindling on first, two down. He'll be off on the pitch. And it's ball four. So Messina works a walk, Brindling down a second. And two out RBI opportunity upcoming for Dalton Reeves. Reeves would love to get South Carolina off to a good start here and get a run on the board. Kind of switch the momentum of this series. It's been all Georgia so far. You see South Carolina right there. They draw a ton of walks. Georgia pitching staff actually walks quite a few batters themselves. So 96 from Harris. We were told on the scout, Grayson, low 90s fastball, but he can get it up around 96, 97 as well. Yeah, you see, he's not a huge guy, probably six foot, six one, and he's just got those quick twitch movements that allow him to throw the ball really hard. He's sitting 95, 96 right now on the, on the stadium board. He's ahead of Reeves 0 and 2. Dalton Reeves comes in a hot hitter. Four straight multi hit games. Grindling leads off second. Messina leads off first. Reeves homered twice yesterday. Homered in the finale at Mizzou last weekend. As I mentioned, he's had a lot of home runs and limited at bats. He's got a ton of power, but if you're South Carolina, you'll just take a you'll take a bloop single right now. You want to. Take advantage of the situation right here. And it's lifted foul. 97 right there. It's a four straight start for Harris, who was a short reliever most of the season. Building up each of the last couple of weeks. Called strike three. Harris gets Reeves, and the Gamecocks will leave first and second. Ian Tippett, obviously a familiar face, and brings a steady hand at the shortstop position defensively and provided a little power last night. He's going to, since he's made the decision to go right hand only, he's, he's looked a little bit better at the plate, Dave. Phelps hammers that to left. Jones is back to the wall, and it's gone. Another home run for Trey Phelps. And he is lighting up South Carolina pitching this weekend. <laughs> I haven't seen the other numbers, but I think we might be looking at the, uh, the SEC player of the week running around the bases right here. He's just been killing this staff. Gets another fastball up in the zone, and he's just not missing it right now. He's one of the hotter hitters in the league and the country. Fastball up right above the belt. Kind of hit that one into a little bit of a little bit of a breeze. You see the flags up in the grandstands blowing in a little bit, but I think he knew that one right away. It's his fifth hit of the series, Grayson, his fourth home run. As a freshman too, I mean we had the A and M series, we were talking to Jim Sloshnagel saying, you know, there were only 20, 20 freshmen in the SEC that got 50 at bats last year, and now they're all household names. So we might be looking at another household name in Trey Phelps. Tip in. 
to Tates to ground out. One down. Trey Phelps mentioned Reeves putting up huge numbers and limited starts. Phelps doing the same. Just his 24th start of the season. He's got nine long balls now. It's got to be nice for him hitting behind some of the hitters. He's hitting behind a lot of older guys that are, you know, they've been playing college baseball for a long time. Tip it with two tough plays and makes them both look pretty easy right there. Showing off his range that was chopped over the head of Ganey. Good job by Ganey right here. Gives up the homer to Phelps, but he comes back and gets two soft contact ground balls to shortstop. One solo home run's not going to kill you. Keep it one nothing right here and try and get your offense back in. Tip it rangy, athletic. Excellent defensive shortstop. Here's Gonzalez with two down. Pops it up. It's a foul ball. And out of play. Fernando Gonzalez is a senior from Panama City. Four-year starter for Georgia. He's having a career year offensively, hitting 300 for the first time in his career. Homered on Thursday for his ninth of the season. Fly ball left field. Jones back to the track. Shaded the sun and makes the play. If they do fall out of the hosting projection to get right back up into the conversation. So Florida on the bottom of that list playing their way in. They're up eight to one currently on Kentucky. I don't think many people before the season had Kentucky as the uh, number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. They've had an unbelievable season. Then you think about South Carolina's resume and took the series against Kentucky. Yeah, it's, it's tough, to, uh, tough to win on the road in the SEC. And Kentucky came into town, South Carolina won a couple of really good games there. And Jones goes the other way. Goldstein has a beat on it. Well hit by Jones, but one down. Yes, three line outs so far. Petrie lined out to right, Jackson lined out to center, and now Kennedy Jones to right field. They're getting some good swings off. Keep that approach, good things are gonna happen. And they're making Harris work. He threw 25 pitches in the bottom of the first. Escaped trouble. Yeah, he, he made a really quality backdoor slider to Reeves to get out of that last inning. I know Reeves didn't like the pitch. It's tough to tell if it clipped that corner or not, but really, really big pitch right there by Harris to get out of that first inning unscathed. Strike one to Parker Noland, fifth year player from Knoxville, Tennessee. Noland is the SEC's active leader in games played. Multi-hit game in this series. 15 now on the season. He goes the other way, foul. Nolan's been all over the lineup, Grayson, this season. Today he's batting seventh. Yeah, he's been scuffling a little bit. We saw him recently, a couple weekends ago, he was hitting in the three, four hole. Like to get back on track here. Had, like you said, a multi-hit game. Harris strikes out Noland. Second strikeout for Zach Harris. Harris has really good stuff. We've seen the fastball up to 97. We've seen a backdoor slider. You get a change up right there that starts middle away and just fades off the plate to the left-handed batter, Noland. And uh, he's throwing the ball well right now. Looking for a one, two, three, bottom of the second. First, he has to deal with Will Tippett. Come on, 
looks like it brings some extra speed to the lineup for South Carolina. He's second on the team in steals, 13 of 14. Sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. That two-run shot yesterday. As I mentioned, in the top half of the inning, he was hitting the head in that Friday game against Arkansas and hadn't played until yesterday's game. But the bat was heating up. The average is st still low, but the bat was heating up before he was hit by that pitch. Grounded softly to the right side. Collins will flip to Harris. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Zach Harris. We're through two. Georgia leads South Carolina 1-0. Grayson Charlie Condon was one away. That streak ended yesterday. It ends at eight. One shy of Jack Caglione this season. Yeah, I mean, that's just an insane streak he's got going and or had going and ended yesterday. But I mean to see two of the two of the top three right there from this season in the SEC with Jack Caglione is uh just shows you what level SEC baseball is right now. Probably two of the top five picks in this year's draft. Just ridiculous power from both those guys. Is there one prospect race and you like a little more? Just thinking about the future MLB level? <laughs> Are they going to let Caglione pitch? <laughs> yes, number one question is. Uh, are they trying to get the next Shohei Otani, or are you just going to put him at first base and see if he can hit 40 for you? I, th I think both of them are very impressive. I know some teams value left-handed bats more than others, um, so Caglione has that going for him. But, I mean, we talked about it earlier. I think Condon's overall offensive season might be the best in history as far as with the with the BB core bats and great pitch right there by Ganey. Strikes out Branch, second strikeout for Garrett Ganey. One down here in the top of the third. I mean sometimes you see those in those big time numbers from guys and they kind of do really well against non-conference opponents and it's not quite as good in, in conference and you look at Condon and Caglione and they're both just just as good in conference. Because Condon is so good, this guy at the plate sometimes gets overlooked. But he's outstanding as well. Corey Collins. Yeah, I really like this guy. I think he's going to play in the big leagues one day. Watching BP earlier, I think he hit six or seven in a row out. Just has that really nice, lofty left-handed swing. And his approach at the plate is just fantastic. And leading the SEC in on-base percentage. Tied for the lead of the nation coming into this series in OBP. Well, I'm surprised he got out of the way of that one after seeing those hit by pitch numbers right there. 24 hit by pitches. And he's the Georgia record holder in that category. Leading the team in walks this season as well. Averaging more than a walk per game. His on base percentage, it's crazy. It's close to 600. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that with you know, four SEC games left in the regular season. You don't see on-base percentages that high hardly ever. So just a uh, – he's getting overlooked, obviously, with the guy on deck, but he's he should be on a lot of all SEC teams come the end of the season. On-base percentage almost 30 points higher than the guy on deck. I mean, it's not just all on-base either. He's got 15 home runs, 45 RBIs. Just a really good all-around player. Three and two the count on Collins. And it's ball four. 47th walk of the season for Corey Collins as that on base percentage continues to climb. Yeah, that was a battle of strengths right there, Dave. Collins with a ton of walks, and Ganey only had five walks on the year coming into that, that at bat. So now you got a decision to make. Decision, of course, is a lot harder now, Grayson, with the runner at first, right? <laughs> well, you see what they're doing with their defense. They're trying to say, here, take your single to right field. And let's move on to the next guy to put that big shift. 
They're coming right after him, attacking that inside corner with the fastball. Three game cocks, as you can see on the left side. And Coach yeah. Kingston said, I don't think there's really any way to get him out. There's just not. You've got to just try to minimize his damage. You've got to try to do the best you can of limiting his impact on the game. And that's all you can really do when a guy has those kinds of stats. He sees the ball so well. You can't walk him every time. He's a really good hitter. Coach Kingston said we're going to just pick our spots with him. Yeah, he's not a free swinger by any means for somebody with so much power. He doesn't really chase out of the zone, and when he gets it in the zone, you don't, you don't see a ton of swing and miss. Gets under it. Jones doesn't see it. Now finds it late, but unable to make the play in foul territory. Break for Charlie Condon. If there's one guy in the country you don't want to give a second chance to, it's this guy. That's a that's a bad break for South Carolina. The Sun's been giving problems all day to that side of the field. See these infielders and outfielders trying to look up, find that Sun, and figure out how to combat it. You got to be smart right here. Has run full on Condon. That's ripped, just fell. He's flirting with that third base line this afternoon. We yeah. saw him hit a double in the top of the first ball that. May have clipped the line, may have been just in foul territory. The Gamecocks challenged it. They lost the challenge. That one right there and the ball that Jones lost in the sun have all been right in that same area. You see the concerted effort by Ganey to get in on Condon. There goes Reeves again. <laughs> There's no secret what they're trying to do. But even with his size, Grayson, Condon goes 6-6. Six, six. He's able to turn on that inside pitch. Yeah, it's impressive. He's got ridiculous bat speed. They will stay inside those balls, too, which is not an easy thing to do. Eight pitch the at-bat. Oh, strike three. Ganey gets Condon. Third strikeout for Garrett Ganey. That was absolute paint right there. Bottom of the zone, inside corner. They have been going in, 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 in. Do it one more time. Great job by Reeves getting under and outside that ball, working it back to the middle. Gets ahead of Dylan Goldstein. Mark Kingston, earlier, earlier in this week, alluded to Garrett Ganey Maybe starting, didn't know it would come so soon on a Sunday afternoon, excuse me, Saturday afternoon against Georgia. But he said there may be one game, he said maybe it's in the postseason where we pull a Michael Roth and say, hey, you're going to start your first game. He said, I know Michael's first start was in the College World Series, and that turned out pretty good. I, I don't think you can ever be scared of trying something your gut tells you might really help the team. Everything's on the table, and this afternoon it's Ganey getting the start in this finale against Georgia. Yeah, I mean, just because just because he's been in the bullpen all year doesn't mean you can, you know, Flip the script. Uh, starters so far haven't really gotten as deep into games as South Carolina would have liked. Coach Kingston electing to go with one of his best arms here. Come on, there, man. The 0 2. Got him. Garagini strikes out the side in the third. He is fired up. Four strikeouts for Gini. And we'll head to the bottom of the third. Georgia. Let him get to that power. And he off right over the middle. Casas drills it to right. Goodbye. Eighth home run of the season for Gavin Casas, and we are tied here in the bottom of the third.
Grayson, on cue, you were talking about his power. There it yeah. is on display. Well, I saw the catcher set up away. They were trying to go a little backdoor slider right there, and it's uh, pretty much right down the middle. And uh, like I said, Casas has ridiculous raw power when he can tap into it on that pitch middle end. It, it's pretty obvious from here, right when he hits it, that ball's going to be gone, and uh, he did not miss that one. 19 homers a season ago, which is eighth in 2024. And he gets the helmet. <laughs> On senior day, too, for Casas. Probably he's got some family here to celebrate. And gives him a nice treat here in the bottom of the third. Rindling through the left side. Which is for the second time this afternoon. Brings tons of speed to first base. Yeah, if it was anybody but Petri here, I might think about going to hit and run. You've got a little momentum after the homer, put a little pressure on the defense, but generally you're going to let Petri just be Ethan Petri when he's at the plate. Petri flew out to right field his first time up. Do it. I can almost guarantee you what Blake Jackson's thinking about on deck. We've seen him put down some really good bunts. He's already planning if you know if I get first and second nobody out. Am I gonna look to get a bunt for a base hit? Let him swing. So a lot of situations here South Carolina can start to think about. Bunked it for a double on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. And then the last game we had together, I believe he was two for two with two bunt for base hits. He's a guy that really knows how to handle the bat. Sandwich him in between Petri and Messina. Gives you a versatile hitter in the three spot. Three and oh, now the count on Petri. I think you're giving the green light right here. Fastball middle in. See if you can make this a 3-1 game. But Petri has a good eye. He's not gonna. He's not gonna chase something. It is 19th home run of the season in the midweek at Winthrop. It was an absolute bomb. Did we ever get a stat cast on that? I saw I saw it floating around social media, and I would I'd love to know how far that ball went. That's a foul ball. He has all sorts of power, but that might be the furthest I've ever seen him hit it. Yeah, I mean, it was in the video I saw. You, it was out immediately. 3-2 here, it's interesting to see if they send Brindling. Oh. It's ball four. First and second, and nobody out for the Gamecocks. See if we get a mound visit here to calm, calm Harris down a little bit or talk about their defensive positioning. Yeah. Called it, Grayson. Here's your mound visit. Yep. I believe that's Coach Johnson out there to talk to his pitcher. Like I said they might be warning that Jackson's a guy that really knows how to handle the bat. Probably just saying, make sure we get the out here. Want to try and avoid a big inning. Short visit as Harris is up to 43 pitches. Got the start last Sunday against Vanderbilt. Season high four innings, no hits, no runs, couple of walks and five Ks. And season high 53 pitches last weekend. He earned the win. Up to 43 right now. We're in the bottom of the third. First and second, one down. Excuse me, nobody out. One in 
That's past the pitcher. Alford, the throw is wide. And here comes Brindling. The Gamecocks lead two to one. Yeah, that's why you put pressure on the defense, Dave. It's just hard to hard to defend a good bunt. And Jackson can really control that bat. He places that perfectly. See right here, the first baseman's pulled in. He's coming to crash, has to immediately retreat, has to turn around, whip his head around and find the ball, and it's, uh, it's too late. Now you've really got something cooking. Brindling with tons of speed, scored easily, and speed of Jackson put the pressure on Alford. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Here's Cole Messina. Grounded to short, Branch, and his throw is wide. Petri scores, Jackson rounds third, and he will stop right there. The defensive miscues from Georgia here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, good things are happening right now. Carolina's putting the ball in play. Messina didn't hit that ball in the screws by any means, but another play where you, you force the defense to be perfect. And this is where you really got to take advantage if you're South Carolina, put up a big time number. Nothing too crazy here, just misses wide with the throw. And there's still nobody out. The Gamecocks have second and third, and three already in. Opportunity to add to that total for Dalton Reeves. He takes outside. And Reeves is a smart hitter. He's got another zone. There's pretty much two places you can't hit this ball, right back to the pitcher and on the ground, pull side to first. You see the first baseman playing even with the grass. Anything up the middle is a, another run, and you're getting Messina over to third. You just got to stay up the middle right here. It's ruled to fielder's choice, and an E6. And they give Jackson a hit and a throwing error on Alford. Three errors already for Georgia. 2 no the count on Reeves. Three no. Action now in the Georgia bullpen. As Harris is behind Reeves. There's a strike. Next pitch will be his 50th. If you're Reeves here, you're looking for that same exact pitch. Fastball out over the plate. He can get his arms extended. Jackson leads off third. Messina off second. Like Up that. the middle, Branch makes the play. Jackson scores, give Dalton Reeves an RBI. And the Gamecocks lead four to one. Really good baseball right there by Reeves. Gets the fastball out over the plate, stays in the big part of the field. Keep it moving, I'm not sure what, what they're challenging here. Foot on the back. There, yeah, I guess they're. South Carolina is challenging the call of out at first base. The previous play is under review. Official well, review brought to you by Cook here, heating air. It's close. It Gamecocks close. have already lost one challenge. Yeah, it is close. LT Tolbert probably. Uh, it's real close. He must have felt he was definitely off to. I think this one's going to stay. The call of out at first base is confirmed. 
South Carolina loses his challenge and has none remaining. Round of challenges pretty early. See Coach Bonnie Lee encouraging Reeves right there, telling him he did a great job of hitting that ball at the middle of the field and getting the run in and getting Messina over. It looks like Georgia's going to bring the infield in here. Messina is at third. Kennedy Jones is at the plate with one down. Infield in for the Bulldogs. Pitch inside to Jones. Jones lined out to right his first time up. 306 hitter, eight homers, 46 runs batted in. Kingston was asked about Jones post game on Thursday. He just said, hey, he's one of our best hitters, a key guy for us, no question about it. RBI opportunity here. 2 0 the count on the left fielder Jones. Fifty-three pitches matches a season high for Zach Harris. His first thirteen appearances this season were all two innings or less. Has emerged lately as a starter. Started April twenty-third against Clemson, went two and two-thirds, and then three hitless with five strikeouts at Kennesaw. Both of those were midweek starts, and into the. Weekend rotation last weekend. He was dynamite against Vanderbilt. Having some trouble here in the bottom of the third. Four in so far for South Carolina. Looking for more. Count is run full on Jones. You see what Harris is trying to do. He's trying to throw that sinker because he, know he knows he has his infield in. He's trying to just get a ground ball to keep that run at third. Full count here, Jones wants something he can get under. Get that run in any way he can. Big strikeout for Harris, he gets Jones. Two away. Went back to the sinker there again. It's either going to be ground ball or strike out there for Harris. Really well executed pitch down in the zone. It's just a tough pitch to get in the air if you do make contact with it. Here's Parker Noland for a two-out run batted in. 91 outside. Nolan struck out his first time up, hitting 266, three homers, 26 runs batted in. Homers this season against Florida, Presbyterian, and Belmont. Nolan's recently joined the 200 hit club. As I mentioned earlier, the SEC's active leader in game is played. Been in this spot racing plenty of times in his career. Yeah, he's his heart rate's probably pretty normal right here even with the runner in scoring position. He's been in this situation quite a bit. And Harris got him with that change up. Nolan's last at bat. Ahead once again, he might go right back to it. Hadn't featured it this at bat yet. Sixtieth pitch coming up for Zach Harris. One and two the count on Noland. Messina leads off third. Here's the change up. Good job by Nolan not biting there. Nolan's 
had 119 career runs batted in while playing for Vanderbilt. He's got 26 this season for the Gamecocks. Right back to Harris, who snatches it and robs Parker Noland. And that'll do it for South Carolina in the bottom of the third, but a big half in. Gonna try and put up a zero right here. These are huge shutdown innings where your team comes and scores three or four. You gotta come right out and put up a zero. That's, that's the start Georgia wants to, for Alford. to combat that. Lead off single here in the top of the fourth for Slate Alford. He's aboard. You're okay with that if you're Ganey, though. That ball wasn't hit hard. You didn't walk him. Sometimes the ball just finds a hole. The scary thing, though, is it's a base runner for Trey Phelps. He was homered again this afternoon. His fourth of the series. Okay, first pitch swinging. Jackson's there to make the play in right. Bulldogs are attacking Ganey early here on yeah. top of the fourth. Yeah, they know he's not going to walk a whole lot of guys. Only has six walks on the year. Only one here today, so it's clearly an offensive approach from them. And I mean, if you're Trey Phelps, why wouldn't you be swinging everything you hit? It's been, been hit hard this series and for the last couple weeks, so. You talked about the emotions from Ganey. Brad Muller wrote a great article on Garrett Ganey. In it, Mark Kingston was quoted as saying, he's like a wild bull sometimes where you have to teach him to harness it properly. You also don't want to take away his emotion and passion. You never want to do that as a coach. As a coach, you want to help him harness it and use it to his advantage. You mentioned that Ganey is someone who's just improved in a lot of ways this season. His mechanics are as good as they've ever been. Which has led to better velocity, a lot more control. And you mentioned the lack of walks, Grayson. Yeah, he pounds his own. I mean, it's uh, it's very impressive. We've talked about it before, and I mean, who knows? He might be a guy that you you want to build up, and when you get to the postseason, you you don't want to take a chance of not getting to use him. Nolan goes to second for one on a first. It's a double play. Four, six, three. And the Bulldogs are retired. Pounce, they're getting a great outing by Garrett Ganey. Tip, it takes a strike from Zach Harris, who's up to a season high, 62 pitches now. Tip, it grounded out his first time up. In his last at-bat race, and I mentioned his bat started heating up before he was hit by that pitch in the Arkansas series. He had homered on April 16th at the Citadel in the seventh. That was the winning run. He was two for three in that one. Also made a diving stop in the field. He homered the weekend prior at Florida. A good series against the Gators. Four hits in that series. Solid production earlier in April. Yeah, that was a tough break for him. Like you said, he was starting to swing the bat a lot better. Yeah, I've haven't been around a ton of cases where a switch hitter stops hitting and focuses on one side, but I would imagine the hardest thing for him is you're, you're not used to seeing breaking balls going away from you. That's kind of the whole, you know, plus of being a switch hitter is those breaking balls come into you. We saw him out in front of one, his first at bat. And it's hard to pull the trigger because you're not used to that ball moving away from you. That's a tough adjustment to make. Harris strikes out Tippett. Fourth strikeout for Zach Harris. Yeah, I thought last inning might have been all we've seen from Harris, but uh, they're sticking with him here and starts out the fourth with a good strikeout of Tippett. Last time up, Casas went deep. But I guess that last inning wasn't necessarily Harris's fault. His defense didn't help him out a lot. Gave had the errors and. He didn't give up a ton of hard hit contact other, other than to this guy. He 
He's only given up three hits so far this afternoon. One of those, the home run to Casas. Two fifty-three hitter, eight homers, thirty runs batted in. The slugger who was honored before the game, on Senior Day. I said a good series a couple of weeks ago it's against Kentucky. Had that dramatic pinch hit homer in the ninth on Friday to tie the game, and then a multi-hit game on Sunday. Real green light. Oh, yeah, what happened there? Tim Gonzalez might have just missed it. Got the 3 0 call, anyways. One now the count on Gavin Casas. Left to the other way, foul. Good command right there from Harris. 3-1 count, it's a hitter's count. He threw that sinker down and away. Executed it really well. If he leaves that over the plate, Sinkers to lefties usually get hit a long way when they stay up to the glove side. So he did a really good job there. Back to back strikeouts for Harris. Stuff-wise, Harris still looks really good. Like we say, he didn't give up a ton of hard contact and gets two strikeouts here to start the bottom of the fourth. Looks like they're going to go to a new arm right here. Of course, I'd like to thank my partners, Grayson Griner and Kit Bachnight, who's not here this afternoon. He's thank been you, with Dave. us most of the season. Thank you. You're a pro's pro, and it's fun working with you. You don't realize how many people go into these broadcasts and how hard everybody works. And it's been really cool for me to hop in and get to meet a lot of really cool people that put these productions on. You and Kip are both Gamecock legends, and we're really lucky to have you. New pitcher is Daniel Patysack. See him, he'll be 89 to 92. Slider, curveball, change up. Sack out of the Czech Republic. Big guy, 6'5, 229. Making his 13th appearance. Yeah, right, a bit inflated. So we've got Czech Republic throwing to Panama. That's, uh, I think that's the first time it's ever happened in college baseball. No, Gonzalez. Lived with some host families when he went to high school at North Cobb Christian in Kennesaw, but his family resides from Panama City, Panama. No! Called strike three as Patty Sack gets Brindling. And he and Harris combined to strike. You're an important guy around here, I'm sure, if you ask, you can get one. <laughs> What's interesting about that list, and maybe that speaks to what college athletics is now in 2024, but everyone in that list, a transfer. I know, it's it's a new day and age in college athletics. Like you said, seven for seven all came from a different school, but still important pieces, and they're gonna get their degrees from the University of South Carolina, so um, good job by the by the program for honoring those guys on senior day before the game. Yeah, well, I'm curious percentage-wise around the country on senior day is what percent of guys are 
three, four-year guys at the same program because it's just a, it's such a rarity nowadays. So hard for freshmen to make their mark. College baseball as old as it's ever been. I mean, we're seeing a really good brand of baseball these days. The number one overall pick in last year's draft is making his major league debut today, this afternoon actually, in Paul Skeens. Um, so anybody on this field right now, you're seeing probably the number one overall draft pick in next year's draft. Who knows how long it'll take him to get to the big leagues. I'm not thinking very long. And his pitching coach at LSU last season, Wes Johnson now the head coach at Georgia. And Skeens, like Condon, you know, faced some adversity. Skeens had to start off at Air Force. Condon didn't have too many offers. Here's a called strike three to Chadwick. One down here in the top of the fifth. I mean, I know you got pitch counts and everything to worry about, but with the way Ganey's throwing the ball, I think you just kind of let him keep going right here. He's at 55 pitches. You don't want to do anything ridiculous and throw him for, you know, 110 pitches, but if he stays efficient, gets weak contact and a couple strikeouts, see if he can get you five, maybe six. The lot is Velocity is still good. He was 92 on the stadium board on that pitch. Remember, he started nine games last season for Liberty. Started 12 games in his three years at Winthrop. Starting is nothing new to Garrett Ganey, just new in a Gamecocks uniform. I mean, you can argue possibly the two best arms on this staff are they were both in senior day today, and they were both transfers, Ty Good and Garrett Ganey. Just over the head of a leaping tippet. And one out single for Gonzalez. Well, hitting the portal is now so important. It's really oh, yeah. what, what recruiting's about now, and it's bringing in the right guys, too. Yeah, I mean, South Carolina lost a lot of their top arms to pro baseball last year, and they, they bring in Ty Good, Garrett Ganey. And I know they've been guys out of the bullpen, but they've also given them a lot of length out of the bullpen. Ganey thrown up to three, four innings sometimes, and Ty Good, as we know, has thrown more than that out of the bullpen. So giving a lot of quality innings. Like you said, that transfer portal. I feel like especially with the pitching staff, you know, it's, it's a little different as a hitter. Pitching staff, you can come in and immediately – Provide a ton of value. And someone who can help right away. You don't have to wait for them to develop. Right. He's doing a really good job getting in on these righties today, too. Branch struck out his first time up. to the count on the number nine hitter, Colby Branch, with Fernando Gonzalez on first. Branch transfer from Baylor. An eight game hitting streak. Pulls that one foul. Branch has excellent power. Second on the team in homers. He's got three grand slams this year. One of those was a walk-off to beat Alabama. Yeah, they set a school record with 10 grand slams this year. Branch and Alford both have three grand slams, which is uh, that probably doesn't happen too often when you have teammates that both have three grand slams in the same season. Yeah, Branch had a couple for Baylor last year, so you don't want him <laughs> no. up at all with the bases loaded no, if you're you South don't. Carolina. Collegiate baseball freshman All-American last year at Baylor. Count evens at two and two. Stiles takes his lead off first.
Six strikeouts for Garrett Ganey. There it is again right there, Dave. Fastball inside to the righties. He's done an excellent job of tying those guys up with velocity. You'll see it again here. Reeves has kind of made a home in there to these righties, just setting up, giving a nice target to Ganey. And he just hasn't missed over the fat part of the plate a whole lot today. And the results are showing. Here's Corey Collins. Collins popped up in the first and then walked in the third. He's officially 0 for 1. 359 hitter and a 595 on base percentage. He pulls that foul. It's a huge pitch and a huge at bat right here. You see the guy on deck. You got to have your best stuff and your best pitch right here if you're Ganey. You want to pitch to pitch to him with nobody on base in the top of the sixth. Fly ball, right center. It'll be Brinling who takes care of Collins. And they're uh, they're on the road helping their team get a SEC series win, so not a bad backup plan. Patty Sack deals a ball to Ethan Petrie. Ethan's 0 for 1 with a walk, flew out to right field in the first, walk and scored a run in the third. With Talmadge Leekroy getting a rest this afternoon, Ethan Petrie is now the only Gamecock to start every game this season. Between that, he's really had to make a position, positional change. Most of the year early, he was out in the outfield. And Coach Kingston has brought him into first base. He's been primarily at first base lately. That's not an easy transition to make. You mentioned earlier Grayson Paul Skeens, the number one pick in the draft, and making his first MLB start. Pete Petrie was the first to homer off him last year. Big upset win against then number one LSU. I think that Skeens guy is going to be pretty good in the major leagues. Petrie grounds out to short. I wonder if Coach Johnson has somebody down there letting him know how he's doing. I believe that first pitch is at 4.05. And I know he's glad to be coaching this game, but I know deep down he wishes he could watch his former player make his debut. Jackson attacks the first pitch and lines it to center field. Base hit for Blake Jackson. It looked like maybe a little Cutter or something, it was 87 up in the zone, and might have just been a fastball hit a little baby natural cut on it, but Jackson does a really good job not missing it. Let's see how Patty Sack is to the plate here. Harris didn't give South Carolina much of an opportunity to run. We'll try and get a little action going here. Strike to Cole Messina. Cole walked in the first, reach on a fielder's choice, and an RBI in the third. 52nd run batted in, that leads South Carolina. I think we're going to see Jackson take off at some point. Not overly quick to the plate. Gonzalez has only thrown out six out of 40 this year. Excellent defensive catcher, but. Especially 0-2 count, generally a good breaking ball count. You can see Jackson giving the little stopwatch sign over there to LT Tolbert, wants to know what he is to the plate to see if he can take off here. 
Jackson leads the team in steals, 14 of 16. He leads off first. Patty Sack strikes out Messina, two away. Fake break from Jackson. Yeah, he was trying to time him up, couldn't quite get it. Good elevated fastball there from Patty Sack. It's just so hard to lay off, especially when you're behind in the count, you gotta cover a bunch of different Check on Jackson. So if you're Jackson right now at first, Grayson, what are you looking for? How are you trying to time up well, Patty you're, Sack? You're watching that front heel. You're seeing if he has any sort of tell with that front heel. And other than that, you're asking LT Tolbert if he's a 1-4 or higher, you're taking off. There he goes. Throw from Gonzalez. It's a stolen base for Blake Jackson, his 15th of the season. Stealing bases is essentially a math equation. What's that guy to the plate? What's that catcher throw to second? And what am I from, from my lead to second base? A little bit of a bobble there from Gonzalez. Good, accurate throw, but like I said, it's a math equation. And South Carolina was on the right side of that one. Good jump as well from Jackson. A math equation, but wouldn't some of the best base dealers tell you it's an art? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was never much of an artist. I was, I was more of a math and science guy, but let's see what we got going on here. Coach Johnson's not happy about something. Oh, they gave him a, gave him a pitch clock violation. He was yelling back and forth at our home plate umpire, Jeff Wright. Two know the count on Dalton Reeves. Jackson in scoring position with two down. And that was a great time to run, too. You're aggressive. You're up three runs. You want to try and get that guy in scoring position with two outs. Even if you get thrown out, it's not the end of the world. This is, this is the time in the game where you're trying to really increase that lead and, and put the game away. If you're down three runs, it's not necessarily a time you want to be running. Dalton Reeves, a transfer from Presbyterian. Two seasons in Clinton. Began his career at the D2 level, Erskine. To PC, to South Carolina. He lost that foul. Very athletic family. His brother Sawyer, star shortstop at the Citadel. Has a sister, Ava, that plays volleyball at Anderson. His dad, Will, played. Baseball at App State. His late uncle Jay Reeves played at Presbyterian for Tim Corbin. Terrific family. They're here this afternoon as Dalton was honored before the game for senior day. To the right side, Alford takes care of Reeves and the Gamecocks will leave one. We will go to the top of the sixth. South Carolina leads Georgia four to one. For someone who wasn't heavily recruited at a high school, it's gonna be a two sport athlete at the D3 level. Former coach Scott Strickland was persuaded. That one's hit deep but foul. To take a chance on Condon, who was tall but skinny. And remember, his recruiting window was during COVID years, so that made things even harder. You couldn't even go see him. And then with the extra eligibility, there were fewer scholarships available for freshmen, so he sort of fell through the cracks. He didn't play travel ball, was a late bloomer. But they thought if they could put weight and muscle on him, he could contribute. And so he redshirted in 2022, put the time in the weight room to gain strength, an extra 20 pounds. Just contributed a little bit. <laughs> I'd say, tip it on the backhand, the strong throw. It's past Petrie, and Condon will reach. On, 
Good job there by Reeves backing that up. What you're taught as a catcher, or anything on the ground, nobody on, you got to get back there just in case that ball gets by. It rarely does, but one time it does happen, he does a good job of getting back there. Here's Dylan Goldstein. Strikeout victim twice. Take strike one. transfer from FAU. Homer to each of the first two games this season to introduce himself to Bulldogs fans. Double digit homers each season he was at FAU. He's in the hole 0-2. Oh Gets a piece. I mean it's almost a blessing and a curse how many strikes the game he throws. He gets 0-2 a lot but it's <laughs> even right there he's just he's so around the zone that Allows a lot of a lot of foul tips, a lot of foul balls, but I'd much rather see that than a guy that's spraying the ball all over the place. Good job right there, trying to get a chase. Someone who doesn't beat himself. It's really someone you want on the mound as a starter, right? Yeah, yeah, he's up to 75 pitches. Showing his coaches, great job right there. Showing his coaches, he can go deep into games once the postseason comes. He's trying to earn that opportunity to hear today. Strikes out Goldstein. One down. Yeah, I think Goldstein might just be guessing right there. I know that feeling. He knew it right away. Seven Ks for Ganey. He's gotten Goldstein three times. Fell back by Alford. I mean, you'd think 77 pitches, Ganey hasn't really done this all year. His velo would be down. That was 93 right there. He's holding that velocity really well. I know he's been a starter in the past, but it's been a while since that's happened. Yeah. Well, last season, as a starter for Liberty, his best performance was six shutout innings with eight strikeouts and a win against VCU. He's pitching into the sixth. He's only given up one run so far. It's first start of the season for South Carolina. I mean, this is one of the best offenses in the country. I mean, it's it, what he's done today has been very impressive. I was about to say, no offense to VCU, but this is Georgia. Right. Plate was the SEC player of the week to open the season after homering twice on opening day. Three times in the season opening series against Asheville. Transfer from Mississippi State. Two and two the count now on Alford. It's pretty big numbers this season after a solid year last year in Starkville at 248, nine homers, 36 ribbies. Hit better in SEC play for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. A multi homer game against South Carolina last year. And the count is run full. Yeah, Alford and Branch hit the portal around the same time and Coach Johnson was actually in Omaha with LSU, so when they were on their visit, they got to meet none other than head football coach Kirby Smart. We know how good he is at uh, recruiting, so he sealed the deal for Coach Johnson while he was away. He'll bring him in. Popped up. Reeves runs out of room. Any football coaches involved in your recruiting visits? I, I wouldn't say so, no. <laughs> You were locked up pretty early, though. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to come here my entire life, so it was uh, 
pretty easy when, when I made the commitment to South Carolina. Would have liked to meet with Coach Spurrier, though. That would have been pretty cool. Eighth pitch of the at-bat. And that's drilled to left. Alford. Goodbye. Two-run shot for Slade Alford. Gets his 15th home run of the season. It's a one-run game. Yeah, that was a long at bat right there. Third time through the order they've seen everything Ganey has, and he gets the barrel to this fastball inside. Just catches a little too much plate. They're able to pull those hands inside and keep it fair. We got ourselves a one run ball game now. Now the tying run to the plate. Someone who's already homered this afternoon and four times in this series and Trey Phelps. Gonna go slow walk out here trying. Opponents hitting just 204 against Veach. He's tossed three straight scoreless appearances. ETSU, Mizzou, and Georgia. Gets to face the red hot Trey Phelps. Here's what he's done this series against South Carolina. Four homers, nine driven in. He's almost doubled his home run total in two and a half games. His first home run was his first collegiate hit. That was on February 25th against Northern Kentucky. Another way foul. Homered last weekend against Vanderbilt at five hits and six runs batted in in that series. At Georgia Premier Academy. Number two third baseman in the nation by perfect game for the class of 2023. Top prospect for the Georgia Bulldogs. So action with the 18 and under national team. Two and two the count on Phelps. He doesn't look like a true freshman in the box. I know that. Having a great first year at Georgia and He's only going to continue to get better. Yesterday was the first multi-homer game of his career. High ball right field, Jackson back to the track. Will make the play in front of the wall. Second out of the inning. See the power there though. I mean that ball gets in on him. <laughs> he hits it all the way to the warning track. Good job by Veach getting that fastball in there just enough to get it off the sweet part, sweet part of the bat. Most of Phelps' power thus far has been to the pull side. I know he hit one off the batter's eye as well, so he's got power to all fields. Impressive for someone so young. Strike one of Paul Tates. Grad student from Greendale, Wisconsin. A Purdue transfer is 0 for 2. homers on the season for Tates. He's one of these defenders for Georgia that has a ton of positional flexibility. I mean, looking at the notes, Condon has starts at five spots this year. Collins started at five spots. Tates has started at five different spots. So they can they can really mix and match these guys defensively to keep their bats in the lineup. He's got Tates, that is, has 20 in left field, two in right, three at second base, one at first base, one at DH. Field and outfield options. 
Yeah, it's not like you're not going to see the same exact lineup day to day, defensively, that is. This is outside, and the count is full on Paul Tates. So it's a Big Ten experience. Began his career at Indiana, then to Purdue. Popped up. She'll drift out to right field. Jackson retires Tates, and that'll do it for the Bulldogs in the top of the sixth. They get to. He's someone who has international experience. You mentioned he's from the Czech Republic. Jones grounds a short. One down. Already pitched in the World Baseball Classic for the Czech Republic before coming to the U.S. for college. Really cool experience for him. That, uh, that's a great tournament they put on every year. Like you said, somebody familiar with the Southeast, playing at Charleston Southern. And now playing on a top 15 club and contributing with Georgia. Deals low to Parker Noland. Parker's 0 for 2 so far. Struck out in the second, lined out in the third. Holmes in his fifth year Vanderbilt transfer was honored before the game. Drafted in the 31st round of the 2019 MLB draft by the Marlins out of Farragut High School. On the backhand, this is Alford. Wow. He gets Nolan. What a play. Slate Alford. Shining in the field for the Bulldogs. He's having a pretty good sixth inning. Home run to cut the lead to four to three, and then he ranges up the middle and makes a great play and hits him right, in the, right on the money. Jeter-esque jump throw yeah. for a second. You know those middle infielders love practicing the old Jeter throw and pays off there. Tippett takes a strike. There's another one of those sliders to Tippett. It's just you see it starting at you, and you're not used to that when you've been switch hitting most of the year. You know, last year, they made the same adjustment with Tippett. They allowed him to only bat from the right side the second half of the season. And he hit all three of his home runs last year, April 30th or later. So heated up late last season. I mentioned earlier, he heated up before that hit by pitch against Arkansas. Hoping he can continue that through May now that he's back. Yeah, that'd be huge for this offense if he can provide a little punch down at the bottom of the order. And provide his usual good defense up the middle. Some things with the bat as well. Coming into this weekend, tied for first in the SEC with eight sack bunts despite the missed time, and he led South Carolina in sacrifices last season. Gets on someone who can steal a base. He's 13 for 14 this year in that category. So he provides a little more than just defense. Good take right there. That was a close pitch. See if we can work a way to get on base here with two outs. Get the power hitting Casas another chance. High fly ball. Right field. Going a long way to center fielder Chadwick. That's power. See if uh, the team lucky enough to select some, let some pitch or just let some hit. But a lot of top first round picks that are going to be coming out of this league. 
Top of the seventh, bottom of the order for Georgia against Chris Veach. This is Clayton Chadwick. He's 0 for 2, grounded out in the second, struck out in the fifth. Transfer from Sam Houston State. He's been a consistent starter the last two months. Four homers this season for Chadwick. Two of those in the same inning against Wofford on March 19th. The other is an SEC play, Tennessee and Mississippi State. Last season he hit 10 for Sam Houston, who saw postseason action. They won the WAC title. They were in the Baton Rouge Regional. Count is full. Coach Johnson must have liked what he saw in the Baton Rouge Regional. Come on, come on over with me to Georgia. And staff had to pitch to Chadwick. Yeah. Played over 160 games at Sam Houston State. All sorts of experience for Coach Johnson's club. Come on, Vee, come on, Vee. It's ball four, leadoff man. A lot of these guys' career, and I expect to see a lot of them in the major leagues within the next two to three years, especially that guy right there. I don't think he's going to take very long to adjust to professional baseball. He's just got the swing and the approach for it. Come on, B, come on, B, two ball right here, baby. And so Langford make it right away. Yeah, saw Dylan Cruz is doing really well in double-A with the Nationals. It's uh, When you put up some of the video game numbers that those guys are putting up in this league, it usually translates pretty well to uh, professional baseball. Going to the count on Gonzalez. Got him. Beach strikes out Gonzalez. One away. Really good job by Veach, had the long at bat with Chadwick and, got, and ended up walking him, but comes out, gets three, three pit strikeout right there to Gonzalez. That devastating change up at the bottom. Gonzalez did not like it. Here's Colby Branch. He takes a strike. Getting off speed from Veach. Branch is 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts. Those were against Garrett Ganey. Ganey went 5 and a third for South Carolina before giving way to Chris Veach. Pretty nice luxury to have your nine hole hitter with 15 home runs and 50 RBIs playing at shortstop, too. It's a, a scary offense that puts up a lot of hits and a lot of runs. Coming over from Baylor, where he was on the Big 12 all freshman team a year ago in the Brooks Wallace Award watch list. Not on it this season, despite the solid numbers. One and one the count on Branch. Chadwick leads off first. Chadwick is three for three on the season in steals. A team that does not run much. They play station to station baseball. Which makes sense, the amount of home runs they hit. Just six sacks, bunts on the season coming to this weekend. Only 21 steals and 23 attempts. It's less than half a steal a game. They rarely give up outs or run into outs. They want base runners. Team that hits this many homers. Yeah. It's a pretty drastic difference from the last series we had against Kentucky, who runs, bunts, hit and run. It's a completely different offensive identity here with Georgia and what they're going to see next weekend with Tennessee, who hits the long ball a lot as well. The Gamecocks are somewhere in between what we yeah. saw with Kentucky and what we're seeing now with Georgia. That's well hit to left. A single for Branch, and it's first and second for the Bulldogs with one down. Got to be creative and find unconventional ways to piece the pitching together. 
Unconventional certainly this afternoon, going with Ganey to start. Worked in their favor so far. Well, this might be a matchup decision too. Eskew known more for that sinker. Or Beach is known more for that change up. Change up to a lefty fading away. And they're hoping they can get the sinker going in on Condon. Right now it's Veach against Collins. Veach gets ahead 0-2. I'd imagine he's going to stick with that change up and try and start that one where that one finished and just let it continue to fade off. You're trying to get a strikeout right here. Yeah! Doesn't get the call from Jeff Wright. One to the count. Fans here at Founders wanted it, Grayson. Yeah, that was a big one. I think that might have been a hair off. That's a fair ball past Petri. Chadwick will score. Branch stops at third, an RBI single for Corey Collins. And we are tied at four. Yeah, just left that one up, caught, caught too much plate. Ahead 0-2 and gets under Petri's glove. Let's take a look here. 0-2 count, yeah, that's just middle. Forty-sixth ribby of the season for Corey Collins. They're gonna intentionally walk Charlie Condon. This will load the bases. So not letting Condon beat them, Grayson. Yeah, that's the right move right there. Tie game. Man on third, still got the double play in order either way, so. Dylan Goldstein's had a tough afternoon, 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Three oh four hitter, 12 homers, 39 runs batted in. Get an offensive meeting right here with Coach Johnson. He's trying to encourage Goldstein after the three strikeout day. Love the eye contact there. He's got faith in his guy right here. Someone who began his career at the JUCO level. Chipola College. 2021. Dylan Eskew was warming in the pen for the Gamecocks. He was there from same at the same JUCO from 2020 to 2022, but didn't pitch in 2021 due to an injury. So that was the year Goldstein was there. Maybe didn't face him in practice or scrimmages, but I'm sure they know each other. Not getting the opportunity to face him here. Still Veach on the mound. Bases loaded, one down, two and one the count on Goldstein. Two and two. Nice pitch there. Strikes out Goldstein. Big strikeout for Chris Veach. Two away. That was huge right there from Veach. Bases loaded, one out. And he put a little pressure on Alford. Bases loaded, two outs. South Carolina sticking with Veach. See if he can get him another one. Alford's had a nice day. He's two for three. Grounded out in the first, singled in the fourth. Two run shot his last time up. That was in the sixth. And 
this team has three guys with 15 home runs. Charlie Condon with 34 home runs. Slade Alford with three grand slams already. We were talking earlier. This is not the guy you want to face with the bases loaded, Dave. Not at all. Beaches ahead, one and two. Noland gets Alford. And Georgia will leave the base. Regular season home game here at Founders Park. First pitch swing, a base hit for Casas. That was a great, great piece of hitting right there. First pitch fastball away, doesn't try and pull off the ball and leave the yard. Passes it on to the next guy. It's not a multi-homer game, but they'll take the multi-hit game. Absolutely. This will be interesting here to see if we get a bunt. Condon playing in real shallow, expecting the bunt. Three sacrifices this season for Brindling. Handles the bat well, pulls it back, and takes ball one. This is something the Bulldogs don't do, but the Gamecocks will do. Manufacture runs almost five times as many sacrifices this season as Georgia. Almost three times as many steals as Georgia. Yeah, you got options here. Costa's not a burner by any means. Trust Brindling with the bat. Probably give him another chance here to get this bunt down. Bunts down the first baseline foul. Brindley not pleased with himself. Slammed the bat down after that one. Yeah. Both of them had just missed the third baseline and then there the first baseline. He's got pretty good bat to ball skills here though. They I think they're gonna trust Brindling to swing a swing away and put something in play. Casas leads off first. Stop by Gonzalez. Barely gets enough of that one to stop it. Gonzalez a really good defensive catcher. Set a school record for catchers with a fielding percentage. As a freshman, that was very high. Now in his senior season. Three and two the count on Austin Brindling. Gavin Casas leads off first. Nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. There goes the runner, Casas. It's hit up the middle, and through for a base hit. Casas is on his way to third. And the Gamecocks have runners at the corners. Check oh, that, Brindling takes runner. off for second, and they'll have second and third with nobody out. That's what Brindling gives you. He just gives you a great at bat, puts the ball in play most of the time. You can get a little full count hit and run action right there. Looks like we might see a new arm here. Got past Patty Sack, and past the diving attempt of Alford. Not sure what the what the center fielder was doing with that throw. Just threw it over everybody, and good job keeping his eyes up by Brindling to go ahead and take that free base to get the. Petri unloads to left center. 
and it's gone. Check that, that stayed in the park. But Petri drives in two. Gamecocks lead six to four. Great hustle by Brindling. He's waiting to see if that ball is going to be caught. You're taught with nobody else to tag right there, and he just gets on his motor and scores from second. That ball is up in the air forever. See both runners are waiting to tag. Petri, <laughs> Petri doesn't wait around. From the angle, it looked like it landed in the bullpen, but it, uh, it was yeah, in front just, of the fence. You just can't tell with the mesh fence right there. You can't tell if that ball hits in or out. And really good job of not assuming there by Brindling. Jackson showed bunt, pulled it back. Multi hit game for Blake Jackson. He's two for three. Robers flips to first. Sacrifice successful from Jackson. Petri advances to third. Jackson can really handle that bat. He, he bunts the ball wherever he wants to. I mean, it's uh, it's been impressive. No matter what the pitch is or where the pitch is, he can place it with the best of them. South Carolina doing an excellent job, even after giving up the tying run in the seventh. One All-American drives in two. Now you got a, your other All-American that's got a chance to drive him in. Only won the count on Cole Messina. Drove in a run in the third. Popped up. Condon who takes care of it. Two away and Dalton Reeves try to drive in Petrie from third. Reeves has one ribby on the day. It was an RBI ground out in the third. Foul back. He's got his first start of the season against his former team, Presbyterian, on March 26th. A pair of three run bombs, a six ribby game. He's been in the lineup most of the season since. Yeah, we didn't know if that was going to be a one time thing or. It was, it was tough to keep him out of the lineup after that, and he's done nothing but enhance his opportunity and put together really good at bats. Interesting, Grayson, just how different this lineup is from the start of the season. You weren't thinking about Dalton Reeves. It looked like he was buried on the depth chart at catcher. Brindling, you weren't thinking about. And here they are playing yeah, integral Ken roles. Kennedy Jones the didn't start the season in the starting lineup. Blake Jackson was kind of that third, fourth outfielder with Dylan Brewer in the lineup. So it's a uh, baseball season is a long season. You're rarely going to have the same guys out there at the beginning that you do at the end. about making the most of your opportunity when you're given the opportunity. Reeves certainly has done that this season. Yeah, we've talked to him down on the field before games. He's always got a smile on his face. I think he's just really excited about the opportunity he's getting. Ober strikes out Reeves. 
Gamecocks are retired here in the box. With Ganey getting the start, I have a feeling they're going to be looking to ask you to get six outs right here and get the win. The numbers this season for Eskew, three and three with 4.38 ERA. Opponents hitting 227 against Eskew. See, not a ton of strikeouts, but he gets a lot of weak contact. 36 strikeouts in 51 innings. Last weekend at Mizzou, one and a third, couple of hits, four runs, four walks, and no strikeouts, and no decision. He was excellent the prior start against Kentucky when he went a season high, six and a third. Did not give up a run. Earned the win. Generally, when you have these sinker slider guys, their misses are going to be horizontal, not vertical. It's really hard to know where to start that ball as a sinker slider guy. I've seen his first couple, first couple misses this inning have been off the plate, in and off the plate away, not necessarily up and down. He says his keys to success is landing the sinker, trusting it, throwing it for strikes. That's where everything starts. He says if I have that thing going, it's usually going to be a good day. Keep the innings quick, keep the defense engaged. Of course, that's as a starter. Lead off walk to Phelps. That'll bring the tying run to the plate. Paul Tates. Right Go back to that Kentucky start, Grayson, when Eskew's at his best. And no one was able to get the ball off the ground. A lot of ground ball outs and quick outs through strikes. And he does that with movement on his fastball. He can beat a top team, five team in the country in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can get that pitch going, it can be a, before you know it, you look up and they're six innings deep with no runs just because the ball is not leaving the infield. Try and take your strikeout right here, 0-2, and then get right back to in the zone. Oh, strike three. Eskew gets Tates on the outside corner. Backdoor sinker. Not sure he was trying to go there, but ended up working out for him. Tate doesn't like it. See Reeves have to reach a little bit. Does a good job bringing that ball back. And that's exactly what the coaches are saying. Is catcher had to reach. One on one down for Clayton Chadwick. Chadwick is 0 for 2 with a walk. Grounded out the second, struck out in the fifth. Walk will score to run in the seventh. He's oh starting to find that release point a little bit. Count. I thought that might have been more of a strike than a strikeout right there. Eskew just painted that one and doesn't get the call. Two and two the count on the number seven hitter Clayton Chadwick. Trey Phelps leads off first. I'll do it again.
Chadwick, a center fielder, really good athlete. And one of these guys has a high school background in football and baseball. Up and away, and the count is full. Phelps has two stolen bases on the year, but down two runs in the top of the eighth. I don't know if this is a situation where you put them in motion. Don't have much of a lead over there anyways. They're gonna, he's gonna stay put. Georgia hasn't even attempted a stolen base in this series. for a hit by Chadwick. Phelps on his way to third. And Chadwick is safe at second. Great at bat right there by Chadwick. Splits the gap. Catches some plate there with the sinker. And Petrie makes an unbelievable throw right here. Chadwick slides to the inside of the bag. Pretty quick one, I think it's gonna stay safe. At the review, the call of safe at second base is confirmed. Bulldogs are in business, second and third, one down. Tying runs are on base. Go-ahead run coming to the plate, and Fernando Gonzalez. Three oh one hitter, nine homers, 44 runs batted in. One for three so far this afternoon. Obviously, you don't want to give up any runs, but you would take two ground outs right here to keep keep the lead and not let Collins and Condon hit with runners on base. I'm going to try and minimize the damage right here. Salas, the number eight hitter. Tip it. Makes a nice play. Yeah. And the pick at first by Casas. The run scores for Georgia. That's Phelps. Back to a one run game. That's huge right there. See this, really thought Chadwick maybe could have got the third right there to. You never know what can happen, pass ball, wild pitch, infield single, but really good play by Tippett. Finished nicely by Casas as very, well. Very nice. So runner at second, two down. Colby Branch looking to tie the game. Fouls it back. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Right 272 hitter, 15 homers, 50 runs batted in. The number nine hitter, Branch. Good job by Reeves right there. Took one shot with the slider. See if he tries to freeze him with that backdoor sinker that he got Tate's with. It will get past Reeves. Wild pitch allows Chadwick to advance to third. He's 90 feet closer. So that's right there what I'm talking about, Dave. If Chadwick was able to advance to third on that ground ball that was behind him, 
that's a tie ball game. That's uh, I think that's exactly what he's talking to his third base coach about right there. It's kind of a tough one because it was technically in front of him. But if he knew where Tip was playing prior to that pitch where he has to range up the middle, there's no way he's going to spin and throw him out at third. That's just kind of a tougher play. The count is run full on branch. Corey Collins is on deck. Sophomore from Lucas, Texas. And it's a tie game. Branch brings in Chadwick. It's 6-6. What ended up not mattering, Branch. Runner on first, two down, and a tie game. Branch at first is two for three. Stolen base attempts. Tough to steal on the left-handed Becker. And Collins, someone who hit 267 last year, six homers, 20 runs batted in after missing, well, I should say before missing 20 games with a hand injury. Missed the final 20 games. Solid numbers each season at Georgia, but this year just a career year offensively. 361, 15 homers, 46 ribbies. Yeah, he's really improved his draft stock. Takes a big 3-0 hack right there. Saw three straight curveballs and tried to put Georgia on top with one swing right there. It's a tough spot. You got best player in the country on deck. The guy that leads the country in on-base percentage takes another walk. Third time this afternoon that Collins will reach. Single in a couple of walks, and now two men on for Charlie Condon. Grayson, what do you do? I walk him. I mean, well, it looks like they might have a pinch hitter coming in after. You normally have the left. I'd, I'd put him on right here. Tie game. You're trying to keep it a tie game. Goldstein struck out four times. He would be on deck. They are going to walk Condon. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's the right play. They intentionally walked him in the seventh. They do it again here in the eighth. He's on base for the fourth time this afternoon. Dylan Goldstein due up, but we're going to have a pinch hitter. Logan Jordan transfer from Campbell. Got some big time power. See, he's a big kid, 6'3, 238. Get the righty lefty matchup here that you want if you're Georgia. We're going to have a big meeting here to probably go over his stat scouting report, see how to attack him. Well, Grayson, they know him a little bit because Logan Jordan, as you mentioned, transferred from Campbell, and Campbell played in the Columbia Regional last season. That's right. He homered twice against South Carolina, had a five ribby game in the season ending loss for Campbell. <laughs> so they know him quite well. They're going to make a change here and not allow the lefty righty matchup. Chess match here at Founders Park. Take another break. New pitcher coming in for the Gamecocks. Bases loaded, two down for Georgia. We're tied at six. South Carolina brings in its fifth pitcher of the afternoon, Connor McCreary, a sophomore from Williston Park, New York. Tall on the mound, six foot six. Creary features a four-seamer that's more like a cutter. Also throws a two-seamer and a slider. Pitches from the third base side of the rubber. There's numbers on the season, 3-0 with a 4.19 ERA. 23 strikeouts to 11 walks. Opponents hitting just 204 against McCreary. His second appearance of this series. Yeah, this is one of the bigger spots he'll come in all year for South Carolina. Tie game against the top 15 Georgia at home trying to salvage a series. And 
He's going to try and get Jordan right here. New pitcher, new batter. Line from yesterday, not great. Try to rebound from that. Curry throws hard. Mid-90s fastball. Bases loaded, two down. Pinch hitter Logan Jordan at the plate. Toughest part about these situations as a pitcher is you know you got nowhere to put them. You don't have the luxury of walking a guy or you got to come right after him. Belts that to left. Into the bullpen. Logan Jordan clears the bases. A grand slam. And it's a 10 to 6 game. <laughs> that extends the already school record. They had 10 grand slams on the year coming in, and now they have 11. Pinch hit off the bench for Jordan. After what he did to the Gamecocks at Campbell in the regional, he's going to love facing the Gamecocks every time. Right off the bench, gets a fastball middle, middle, and he doesn't miss it. Knows it right away, and that bullpen's going nuts. A huge top of the eighth inning for Georgia. They trailed six to four. They now lead 10 to six, a six run half inning. And not done as Slate Alford is at the plate. Ninth Bulldog to come to the plate here in the top of the eighth. Ground ball to the left side. Lee Croy charges. And takes care of Alford. And that'll do it for the Bulldogs. In the top. Ryan needs a, an excellent last six outs here to, to put up some runs to give him a chance to win this game. Rober is going to be a tough play. He makes it. Gets Lee Croy. That grand slam really took the air out of Founders Park. Have to try to get it back now. Five outs left. Yeah, one swing of the bat can do that. It can, it can take the whole, the whole stadium away. All the momentum that, that team has had. Parker Nolan get it back. He's 0 for three. Dylan Carter, who is taking over in center field for Georgia. That's ripped for a base hit. And it gets past the right fielder. That'll allow Nolan to advance to second. Though they lead by four, Grayson, it's been a sloppy game for Georgia defensively. It has. That's, that's probably going to be their fifth error. Yep, fifth error right there. And still find themselves up by four. If you're South Carolina here, it's just next guy up. you got to find a way to keep the line moving. And you hope one of your middle of the order guys can leave the, leave the yard like Jordan did and put a dent in this lead. But you're not going to get it all back at once. You've got to keep going one guy after the next. Chadwick who had moved over to right. With Carter in the game now in center. So single for Nolan. He advances to second on the error. Runner in scoring position for Will Tippett. And the hole 0 and 2. George is just going to keep feeding that right on right slider. He's been seeing it the whole game. No matter who's been on the mound. Tippett looking for his first hit of the afternoon. One and two the count on the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. 
An athletic family, his sister Maddie played volleyball at Georgia Tech, four years starting libero. Does some coaching at the club level now. Grounded to short, Branch. Two away. Advances to third. It's been a nice afternoon for Gavin Casas. He's two for three. Homered in the third, singled in the seventh. Scored a couple of runs. Has the power to cut this lead in half. Him and Brindling and find a way to get on. That brings Ethan Petri to the plate as the tying run. That's really, at this point, what you want to. All you can ask for, really good eye right there. Nolan leads off third, 2 0 the count on Casas. MVP of the Columbia Regional last season. They want to have a Columbia Regional this season. Coming back in this one has certainly helped that cause. Tremendously, yeah. <laughs> you fall on this one, it gets a lot more difficult to get that one of those last host spots. The tough thing is that you got you got a top 15, 16 RPI, but it's hard for the committee to justify putting so many SEC teams in. So you're kind of fighting against teams like Mississippi State, teams like Georgia to get one of those final spots. Georgia might lock themselves into one of those spots should they sweep the Gamecocks here in Columbia. Yeah, I think if they're able to get four more outs, regardless of what they do next weekend and the final weekend, they might, uh, they might lock it up for themselves. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. The runner at third is Parker Noland. Driven out to left center. Carter gives chase and makes an unbelievable play on the warning track. Oh, web gem from Dylan Carter. Guys coming off the bench just making huge impacts for, for Georgia between Jordan. Go ahead, Grand Slam with it being a tie game. And South Carolina's got to keep it at four right here. You're still a, it's not easy, obviously, to get a Grand Slam, but you're still a Grand Slam away from tying it back up. You don't want to. You don't want this game, this lead to get any bigger. South Carolina threatening the bottom of the eighth. It took a highlight reel play in center field from Dylan Carter. Let's keep a four run lead. This one will get past Petri. Lead off double. Trey Phelps continues to punish South Carolina. Dave, at minimum, I think we're looking at the SEC Freshman of the Week, but potentially SEC Player of the Week. Third time he's reached this afternoon. Homered in the second, walked and scored a run in the eighth. <coughs> Doubles here in the ninth. <laughs> Offensive meeting right here. Paul Tates is due up. Could we see the rare sacrifice from Georgia? It's either going to be a sacrifice or they're saying, get you a pitch middle away, hit a ground ball to the second baseman. If it gets through, great. If not, we got to get this guy to third and get another insurance run. But Tates does not have a sacrifice this season. Bulldogs have just six on the year. See what they decide to do. Swinging away, takes a strike. Go, 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 go. 
330 hitter, three homers, 19 runs batted in. What do you think, Grayson, about the philosophy of just not playing small ball at all? I think there's ways you can play small ball without playing small ball. Like I said, this is just situational hitting right here. I, I would wager to say that coaches weren't saying we want you to fly open and try and hit a homer here. I think they're saying stay on the ball, look the other way, but we're going to let you hit right here. So, I mean, when you have the numbers that they have offensively, I don't think I'd be bunting a whole lot either. And a lot of that, I think, Dave, is that they're winning a lot of these games, so they're not going to, you know, they're going to try and increase those leads instead of play play for one run. That makes sense. McCreary to third, gets away. This will allow Phelps to score. Georgia leads 11 to 6. And they would have had Phelps at third. Yeah. Career just throws that ball. Some pitchers that throw really hard have a tough time with those shorter throws right there. And it's uh, yanks it a little bit. Luke Croy. A little bit of a short hop right there. Lined up last minute, but it worked out great. They had a spot for Wittig. It was pitching coach Matt Williams who found him through a connection with the San Diego Padres organization and worked fast to get him on a visit. Man, he got his back foot right there. Chadwick will reach first and second. So what, Wittig's getting San Diego weather right now. 77 degrees and perfect day here. It really was a great day for baseball. And had a great game throughout up until that top of the eighth. Of course, if you're a Bulldogs fan, you're still yeah, saying it's still a great game. It's great, that's right. Gamecocks fan, you're not thrilled being down five, but it's not over. Georgia's off in 11 runs, 11 hits. I have a feeling uh, when they get back to Athens, they might be doing a little more extra defense this week after the five error game, but we'll see if they can uh, still come away with the win despite the five errors. Witte gets ahead of Fernando Gonzalez. 0-2 the count. Gonzalez is one for four. Witte sustained a forearm injury, if I remember correctly, the game we did. And Hadn't pitched a lot since until the Winthrop game during the midweek. Luckily, it wasn't anything more serious. His first appearance in what, almost a month. Gets Gonzalez looking. Yeah, when you have a slider that has that much spin and that much movement, really freeze you with the fastball. Gonzalez looking maybe for pitch to start up a little higher and it just stays right on that plane. Good pitch by Wittig. Here's Colby Branch. Multi-hit game for Branch, he's two for four. Branch had the big hit that extended that inning. Tied the game with the single, the two-strike single the other way, and then that allowed the grand slam to happen a couple batters later. And that was a clutch hit with two down. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's such a luxury to have a hitter like Branch in your nine hole before the – and that might be strategic, kind of turn the order over to some of your run producers. This so one bounces and gets away from Reeves. Allows Tates and Chadwick to advance. Tates down to third, Chadwick up to second. Better RBI opportunity now for Branch. One 
won Baylor's Triple Crown last season. Started all 55 games at shortstop for the Bears. Gamecocks have a shift on for Branch, but they also have the infield in. They're trying to keep it, keep it at five. Full count now on Colby Branch. Started all but one game this season. Tates leads off third, Chadwick off second. Lifted to left. Jackson coming in. Makes the play. No opportunity for Tates to tag. what's next for Georgia. SEC Eastern Division battle with Florida. Yeah, Georgia's been good at home this year. Their one uh, kind of blemish on the record was they were three and nine on the road in SEC play coming into this series. They're 10 and two at home. Let's see what we got going on here. Sandy can't lick his fingers without wiping them. Gord Collins at the plate. One for three. He's also walked twice. three times this afternoon. On base percentage is gonna keep going up, already leads the nation. It's currently at 596. Uh, Collins, someone who was highly rated coming out of high school. Tremendous numbers as a junior and then his senior season was canceled due to COVID. MLB.com had him as high as the number 65 prospect for the 2020 MLB draft. It's tough for those teams to take a high school player and not having him play in his senior year. Yeah, I think he's, especially with this season, only improved that stock. Watching him during BP, and he just has a very simple swing with a lot of power, especially to the pull side. I think the question for him at the next level is going to be where is he going to play in the field? Teams put a lot of value in, in defense as well as offense. Most of his career starts right at DH, summit catcher in the outfield this season, mostly at first. <laughs> Lifted deep to right. Petri looks up, and this one is gone. Three run homer for Corey Collins. It's a lot of what his BP looked like when we were watching Dave. He had about seven or eight in a row just like that. Just perfect loft to the pull side for lefties. This Georgia offense just doesn't let, ever let you breathe. Stays behind that ball. You see the back knee hit the ground. That's an easy pitch to just smother right into the ground. And he uses those legs to get behind it and get that ball in the air. 16th homer of the season for Collins. You know, he's pitching for the Gamecocks against the Bulldogs. And he comes in to face Charlie Condon. <laughs> Oh, 
foul ball. First two for Polt look good, 94-95. Sure he's got a little extra adrenaline facing the former team. Always brings out a little extra in guys. Tippett, nicely done on the back end. Smooth play at shortstop from Will Tippett to retire Condon. That'll do it for Georgia. Billy made this a, a blowout that wasn't necessarily a blowout up until these last couple innings. Robert still on the mound for the Bulldogs. Zach Harris went three and two thirds. Daniel Patysack went two and a third. It's been Robers ever since. Brindling lines to center, and it drops in for a base hit. A lead off single for Brindling. It's his third hit of the afternoon. Tate continues to swing the bat well at that lead off spot. Not going to do anything crazy as far as power numbers go, but gives you a good quality at bat and gets on base again. Here's Ethan Petrie. Missing off the outside corner. Petrie's one for three. He walked and scored a run in the third at a two run double in the seventh. Off the wall. One and one the count on the sophomore from Land Lakes, Florida. Two and one. Talked about Collins being high prospect out of high school. Petri, of course, as well. In Florida, top 100 player in the country. Sometimes it's hard to get those guys to school because they're so heavily scouted in Florida, where all the scouting directors live. He's an elite talent. Incox, lucky to get him. It's been terrific in his two seasons here in Columbia. Back-to-back -back singles for South Carolina here in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, Florida's right up there with Texas, Georgia, California, one of the top baseball and really all sports states in the country. There's so many good athletes in high school in those states. And South Carolina got a good one in Ethan Petrie to get him to come to South Carolina from Land Lakes, Florida. So talented and a team first guy. Blake Jackson has a multi-hit game. He's two for three. Branch will step on second for one on a first. It's a double play. Jackson's been having good at bats all day. Hits that one right on the screws and it's just right at the shortstop. Easy double play. And here's what's coming up for South Carolina. Doesn't get any easier, Grayson. A trip to Knoxville. Take on the Volunteers. No, there's been a lot of low numbers next to the team South Carolina's played this year, and they get the number one team in the country. If they want any chance of playing in Founders Park after this weekend, they might need to. They might need to sweep that one at minimum. Take two out of three and, and 
put some pressure on the decision makers, but that's a tall task. They, they hit a bunch of home runs too. If they're not able to host, could be the final Founders Park at bat here for Cole Messina, who's plenty of draft lists. Yeah, really good catcher. Had two outstanding offensive seasons here at South Carolina. He's going to hear his name called. Certainly in the upper half of the draft. He's worked really hard defensively to prove to teams that he can stay behind the plate at the next level. It's the ball as hard as anyone. Grayson, you know, being a former catcher, you just don't get cleanup hitters in the catching position very often. No, I mean, he's a... The offensive first catcher, but he's a he's a really good defender as well. So it's almost not even fair to say. Strikes out Messina, and that'll do it.
its power. See if uh, the team lucky enough to select some, let some pitch or just let some hit. But a lot of top first round picks that are going to be coming out of this league. Top of the seventh, bottom of the order for Georgia against Chris Veach. This is Clayton Chadwick. He's 0 for 2, grounded out in the second, struck out in the fifth. Transfer from Sam Houston State. He's been a consistent starter the last two months. Four homers this season for Chadwick. Two of those in the same inning against Wofford on March 19th. The others in SEC play, Tennessee and Mississippi State. The last season he hit 10 for Sam Houston, who saw postseason action. They won the WAC title. They were in the Baton Rouge Regional. Count is full. Coach Johnson must have liked what he saw in the Baton Rouge Regional. Come on, come on over with me to Georgia. The staff had to pitch to Chadwick. Yeah. Played over 160 games at Sam Houston State. All sorts of experience for Coach Johnson's club. Come on, Reed, come on, Reed. Come on, Ball four, leadoff man.